الأول من يناير الكلمة الثاني عام 1959 تلقي الأشهر الثاني وتطالب باستعادة هذه الأراضي المحتلة أما واشنطن فهي تستهير في الشاب with a repair of a national 183D receiver that has one dead band. I actually worked on this receiver last night and I had to do some brain surgery and when I got done I thought man I should have put that on YouTube to show you guys this issue because it is a very unique problem. Luckily I was able to fix it. So pretty much what I'm going to do in this video is show you the symptoms, show you the process that I went through, and now the receiver's working great. That's good news. Let me show you what I went through. All right, let's take a look under the hood of the National 183D. You can see the construction of these things is great. Got all the shields in place on these little miniature tubes. Here is the main power transformer. This one has been replaced. The old ones are known for going up in a ball of smoke. So it obviously happened to this thing in its life. Here are the push-pull pair of 6V6s for the audio output. Now they made a couple different versions of this receiver. One of them ran a 6J5. Later on, National updated it to a 6SN7, which this one has. So one half of this is the inverter for the output tubes, and the other half is the S-meter driver circuit. So it's kind of a combination of octal tubes and the miniatures. So here it is, the National NC183D, a very desirable radio amongst hams and shortwave enthusiasts. The NC183D is known for its booming audio because it runs a pair of 6V6 output tubes, just like in a guitar amp, all right? Well, when the receiver came into the shop, it would work great on 80 and 40 meters. Plenty of background noise, plenty of gain, but when I'd go to band B, instead of hearing that, you'd hear that. It was dead, okay? I took a signal generator, actually injected a signal, and as I tuned, I could find the signals I was injecting, but they're way down, okay? So pretty much band B was dead, but the good thing was, is that the receiver could see the signal, it just wasn't amplifying it, okay? So I run across a lot of receivers, and I'm sure most of you have too, where some of the bands work great, and you always got one of them that's low on sensitivity. Well, this was one of them. And let me show you what I found and how I repaired it. So a good place to start when you're troubleshooting these old vintage receivers are the tube socket voltage charts, okay? So this is kind of a map of the tube layout underneath the radio, and they identify the voltages that you should expect to see on each pin. So since we have a problem with one band of RF, we're going to start out by looking at V1 and V2, which are the RF amplifiers. And pin 5 is the one you want to concentrate on. That's the B plus going to the tube. So obviously if you go to a band and you lose that voltage, that band is not going to work. So we're going to concentrate our efforts on V1 and V2, which are the RF amplifiers for the receiver. Since we have a dead band, you want to make sure that these guys are operating on each band. So here is one section of the rotary wafer switch, which is part of your band switch, and it selects these coils depending on what band you're on, okay? So as you select a coil, the B plus or high voltage will go through that coil and it'll end up going over here to pin five of the 6BA6. So on each position, you should see, in this case, around 220 volts DC on pin five of the 6BA6. If you don't, now you're gonna have to trace back and find out where you're losing it. So when I was troubleshooting this receiver, that's exactly what I did. I have my meter set up on pin 5 of the first RF amplifier to V1. Okay, So as I turn the band switch, watch the meter, you'll see the voltages change a little bit. 
That's because each coil has slightly different resistance, right? But what I found was, is when I went to band B, which was the one that wasn't working, I lost that voltage. Went to just a couple tenths of a volt. However, if I went to all the other bands, the voltage would return. So I knew I had an open somewhere between pin 5 and one of those coils. And I was hoping it wasn't a bad coil. So here is the RF cavity of the radio. And you can see all these coils and capacitors for each band. And as you can see, they pretty much built the radio around this whole mechanism. So once it's in place, it is very difficult to troubleshoot. So I was examining the wire coming from pin 5, and I found that it comes up to this wafer section of the radio. So I took a magnifying glass, I was inspecting things, I ohmed out through the switch and I found that it was okay, but then when I got to this coil, I found that I lost the high voltage. Okay, so I'm going to zero in here, show you what I'm talking about. So this coil right here is for that band selector switch position that it's not working, all right? So as I was taking a look, I saw a fine wire inside of the coil, okay? Now I'm going to cut to a scene here and give you a close-up. It's not exactly the best quality camera, but it will give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. So inside of this coil is a little wire that chases down the center and it will exit a hole in the side of the coil form, okay? And then there's two windings on the outside. One is a fairly aggressive winding. It looks like maybe 18 gauge, but then there's a real fine coil. And I'm telling you, the wire is about the size of your hair, okay? So as I was looking at that, I saw one strand of that coil hanging out in the breeze. And inside of this coil form, the other half was there and it was broke. I thought, oh no, what a terrible job. But anyway, luckily, with the assistance of a good magnifying glass, bright light, X-Acto knife, and tweezers, I was able to connect that wire back up, and now the receiver is operating fine. So I ended up chasing the wire back down into the form. I came out the side, and I left a stub. I cleaned and tinned the wires, soldered it up. I got my voltage back on that band selector, and the receive came back. Man, was I happy. So there is evidence left, obviously, of the repair. You see this little pigtail hanging off with the wire soldered to it. So as long as nobody gets in here and pokes around, it's going to be fine. It'll last another 50 years. But it's very fragile. All these wires and these coils are fragile. So you wonder, how did it break in the first place? Could it have been that somebody keyed a transmitter into the radio and it stressed the wire and it just popped? Could it be that somebody was in here tweaking around? Because you do have to be in here for calibrations. Maybe they slipped and hit the wire and broke it. Either way, when you're working on this vintage equipment, you really have to be careful, especially in this area, because you do not want to have to get in here and remove and replace these coils. That would be a huge job and probably not worth it. There's that dead band B, right around 15 megahertz, playing some shortwave on a one foot piece of wire. So you can just imagine how well it's going to operate when you get a real antenna on this old classic radio. Why do I do it? So that these radios can live on and you guys can enjoy them. Hope you enjoy the video.